हेलो एवरी वन आई एम मिहिर कुलकर्णी आई एम वर्किंग इन डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग इन के आई टी कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग कोल्हापुर इन लास्ट लेसन वी हैव सीन यूनिट नंबर वन मैकेटोनिक सिस्टम्स लेसन थ्री दैट इज इंट्रोडक्शन टू द स्कैडा सो द कंसेप्ट ऑफ स्कैडा दैट इज supervisory control and data acquisition along with different functions which is catered by the scada that we have uh, covered into last lecture and uh, now we will try to see uh, what is the history of scada what are the different types of scada and uh, you can say what are the domains of scada where uh, scada systems are used in okay so let us start with this particular uh, topic so let us see what is the history of this particular scada as discussed in last video also the history of scada before the scada systems industrial parts and remote sites are relied on personnel to manually control and monitor equipments via push buttons and analog dials so before implementing scada we were handling everything manually after that uh, we had some uh, you can say uh, systems which are solenoid uh, wall controlled or you can say uh, solenoid based systems which are electromechanical kind of systems are introduced even after that for actuating these kind of electromechanical systems we were using push buttons okay and these push buttons are operated by the human beings okay so it is uh, automated system but human beings are going to that particular system whatever that location is and they were trying to operate that particular system by using push buttons so this was happening in the earlier days before scada so industrial organizations started to utilizing relays and timers to uh, you can say provide some level of supervisory control without having to send people to remote locations to interact with each device so for activating each and every device you are not required to go to that particular location you can sit to one central room and uh, you can press that button in that particular room itself okay so that whenever you are pressing that button at one location it will be acted to the location where you wanted to have so it is achieved through uh, some of the uh, you can say relays and timers so that uh, whenever you are activating it after some time it will be happening or you can say uh, it will be immediately starting and after some time it will stop automatically so such kind of automations are performed uh, using this kind of system and the only control is uh, taken in a uh, central room in a scada so this is this is how the history was evolving uh, because of this kind of change a uh, lots of manpower can be saved because uh, one person sitting in one particular control room can control entire factory over there on the other hand in earlier days whenever some issue is there so he used to travel to particular location it will take maybe 20 minutes to reach that particular location after that it will try to activate it it will be coming back to the control room it he will come to know that okay there is something wrong into some other uh, factories so it will be going to even that location and uh, uh, this will continue so one person was not enough even 10 or you can say 100 people are also not enough based on the size of a industry and to make it easier to make it uh, you can say manageable uh, these scada systems played very important role okay so there were four types of scada so when we are discussing about this history uh, these generations of the scada systems have evolved so first generation is uh, you can say uh, monolithic kind of or early scada systems which was uh, you can say invented in 1950s uh, 50s to 70s are the uh, you can say region where these systems were used uh, the second uh, generation was distributed scada system uh, it was in 19 
80s to 90 uh, so uh, at the time uh, you can say you have multiple pcs available so uh, you are, you are using computers for collecting data or you can say uh, instead of uh, a central decision you can have multiple decisions at uh, multiple places so uh, this kind of system was introduced into second generation the third generation was networked scada systems it was in 1990s to 2000 uh, you can say uh, region so uh, in that case um, it is a network uh, you can say uh, whatever machines whatever devices uh, are in network you will be able to access these kind of devices uh, network devices uh, over here so network scada systems were introduced in 1990s and 2000 and after that fourth generation which was internet based kind of technology so these scada systems uh, introduced in 2000 where instead of a local network you are using internet so uh, the the next part is you can say internet of things so uh, the current technology which is used uh, in the industry uh, we can call it as a fourth generation or even uh, some literature will be calling it as a fifth generation generation kind of CADA system so uh, these are the four generation uh, these generations can be seen from the evolution point of view so uh, the SCADA system was evolving uh, over the years and these are the changes being made into the SCADA systems the different domains of applications of this kind of SCADA systems uh, it could be electrical generation transmission and distribution there are many domains uh, uh, for sure for uh, these SCADA systems but I will be highlighting some of the important domains and I will try to explain you why uh, using these SCADA systems is important or essential into these kind of domains so electrical generations transmissions and distribution uh, so electrical networks are uh, across the distance of this electrical network is huge so uh, it could be uh, any environmental condition could be there uh, uh, the area which is covered by this particular uh, network is huge and you may not be able to gather data from all these points all the time so the, the debugging gate uh, the issues which are there uh, the solving this kind of issues is quite difficult when you are thinking about uh, electrical generation transmission and distribution and for which we can use uh, SCADA systems these SCADA systems will be uh, helpful in uh, you can say electrical generations uh, and transmission you will be coming to know that okay uh, uh, how much is the electricity supply what is the demand in the grid and all those things so the grid management becomes easier uh, by sitting in a one control room you will be able to see what are the power requirements what are the power uh, which is supplied to our uh, you can say grid and all those things so this is all can be uh, manageable by using SCADA systems the another systems or you can say domain is automation so whenever we are using automations um, uh, many automated companies are using SCADA systems where there is one control room and all the data which is getting uh, you can say collected across the uh, you can say domains across the uh, company uh, different machines different processes all these data will be coming to one particular location and uh, some of the decisions are taken automatically some of the decisions are taken manually by the person who is sitting over there so this is about uh, domain okay the third uh, you can say domain is uh, railway and transportation even you can see that this particular network is a huge network suppose a railway in India uh, it is a huge network that we can see and uh, tracking all this network uh, controlling this network uh, you can say analyzing this network activating some of the uh, you can say signals over there this is all critical and for which we can use uh, this kind of SCADA systems uh, in a railway and transportation uh, chemical storage and tra transportation again uh, there are some uh, you can say scenarios where uh, it is hazardous to uh, visit a particular location so you cannot go in contact with those kind of chemicals or gases so in that case you will be sitting at some remote location and uh, you will be monitoring the processes you will be monitoring the uh, what is happening over there and you will be taking actions uh, by sitting in a remote location only 
So, these are the some of the uh, important domains where uh, you can say SCADA systems are used, but there are many other domains uh, if, uh, which are there uh, in which we can use SCADA systems whenever we wanted to reduce our uh, headache of supervising it, monitoring it and taking some action uh, in all these domains we can use uh, SCADA systems. So, uh, that is it uh, about the domains and history of the SCADA systems. We will continue with the different components architecture of the SCADA systems in uh, upcoming lecture. So, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, listening to this particular lecture.